Okay, this isn't necessary for a lot of classes, but this is something you should understand if you want to really understand the algebra of the quadratic formula. You might understand how to use it, but where does it come from? Well, assuming that you're well versed with completing the square, it's not particularly difficult to derive the quadratic formula. You just have to be careful with your algebra and kind of know where the algebra is headed. So if we have the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, we're going to complete the square on ax squared plus bx, except we really don't want to complete the square on when the x squared term is something other than one. So to prevent or to avoid having to do that, we simply divide both sides here by a. And we get what you see here, and that should be very clear. Uh, and of course, a has to not be equal to zero because we can't divide by zero. But if a happens to be zero, we no longer have a quadratic equation. We have a linear equation, and we won't need the quadratic formula. So in any equation for which we actually need the quadratic formula, we will have a non-zero a, and this is going to be valid. OK, now this leaves us the process of completing the square on the x squared and the x terms, as you know we do. And if you don't know that, make sure before you uh, view this that you really do understand completing the square. This isn't absolutely essential for most courses, unless otherwise stated. So don't bother yourself with this until you're really well versed on completing the square. And for most courses, you don't even really have to worry about this proof. OK, but people are curious, and this is a really good exercise in algebra, so let's go through it. OK. Now we're going to complete the square here. And you know and you should understand thoroughly why you do that by first dividing the coefficient of x by 2, which gives you, in this case, b over 2a. Then your completed square will have the form x plus b over 2a quantity squared. Why is that? Because when you square this, you get this. And again, this should be very straightforward, uh, or at least you should be able to sit down and, with just this expression, write it out and see that the result is this. Don't be looking at this and trying to get it. Just sit down with this expression, square it, and you're almost certain to get this. It's not that difficult to square a binomial. OK, so uh, when we square this, you can see exactly why we end up with b over ax, which matches what we have here. So we have our x squared plus b over ax here, just like we have it here. And then we have this plus b squared over 4a squared. Well, that means that the thing that we started with up here is the x squared plus b over ax is equal to this minus the b squared over 4a squared term. So subtracting b squared over 4a squared from this equation, we get this. Now, this is all kind of a sideline. This is not part of our solution. This is something we want to think through, though, so we understand why we can replace x squared plus b over ax with this. Then we proceed to replace x squared plus b over ax with this, and we get this. Because what we have right here okay, is the same thing we have over here. So we have that. And then, of course, we have the c over a. So this is completely equivalent to this by what we did in here. OK, well, we've got this, and we're actually almost there, except for some simplification. In order to solve an equation where we have uh, some square plus a bunch of other stuff equal to 0, we just subtract that bunch of other stuff from 0, and then we'll be able to take the square root of both sides, actually plus or minus square root of both sides. Again, uh, an operation you should be familiar with in terms of some concrete examples that you've completed. OK, so we add b squared over 4a squared to both sides. Well, there it is. And we subtract c over a from both sides, and there it is. 
then we look at this and we say, well, you know, as a simple common denominator, that's 4a squared. So uh, the b squared over 4a squared is still there. But to get a 4a squared in the denominator here, we've got to multiply by 4a, which means that we're also going to have to multiply the numerator by 4a, or what we have won't be equivalent. Okay, but that's going to give us negative 4ac over 4a squared. And then we're going to have common denominator 4a squared, so we can add our numerators. So that gives us this squared equals this. I've rewritten it up here. Okay, just pause for a second. I had a smudge on the board there. Uh, didn't want that to be misleading. Okay, so we have this equation. How do we solve an equation of this form? Something squared equals something else. So the something that's being squared, which in this case is b plus uh, x plus b over 2a, is going to equal plus or minus the square root of that thing that the square is equal to. Well, we have this, so what are we going to do? We're going to solve for x. We just subtract b over 2a from both sides. We get x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus this term. And then on this term, uh, and I could have simplified this 4a squared uh, in the denominator of the square root at any point after this, but I waited until I was down here so we could address it explicitly. But the square root of negative 4ac plus b squared over 4a squared is just the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. And the square root of the denominator, the reason we wanted to separate that out, is the square root of the denominator is just 2a. Okay, now we have negative b over 2a plus or minus this, which simplifies to this. And look here, we have the same denominator on both of these things. <coughs> so we can factor uh, that denominator out or multiplication by the reciprocal of 2a factors out. Um, and we end up with negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And this is the quadratic formula. So let's put a big red ring around that. And also lower the camera a little bit. I don't know why the camera keeps kind of changing its focus. I don't think it's moving. Um, anyhow. Right there is our quadratic formula, and that is our value of x. So I can just say x equals. Now let's be sure we understand the logic of our result. We started with this, and we followed rules of algebra to get down to this. So if this is so, then this has to be so. Also, we could take the rules of algebra and work them from here back to here because each of these is each of these statements is equivalent to the one before it. So if this is true, then this is true. So this is what we call a mathematical equivalence. And we can state the mathematical equivalence as this if and only if this. We could also state it the opposite way. I'm not going to write it down. It would be this if and only if this. And if you understand the logic of if-then statements and if and only if statements, then this should be clear to you. Okay, To say that if this, then this, and if this, then this, is to say this if and only if this, or if you prefer, this if and only if this.